And we are live. Good afternoon, mo. Good afternoon po sa lahat lahat ng ating mga kaguro back there in the Philippines. Of course, welcome back to our part two of General Science with Doc H. No part two today. We start at uh, this is part one, but of course we are now having our part two, which are which of course is going to start right now at one p.m. Okay, until. Uh, Doc H is done with your discussion for today. Of course, for our opening today, I'd like us to all watch this video. This is from Ateneo. Of course, this is a video that they have prepared for all of us. And I'd like all of us to please uh, reflect on the message of this video. No? This has been prepared by Ateneo de Iloilo, headed, of course, by their, their principal, their talented principal, Doc H. Lagon, our guest lecturer today, with the participation of the faculty and staff of Ateneo de Iloilo. Oops. Sorry, we're having trouble. Okay. Take two po. Now, again, if you are a TLE major, your major is agri, fisheries, your major is values, or it might be physical science, make sure that you stay tuned. I'm going to give you your instruction today as to how you can get your freebies. So, again, pag a major niyo po ay TLE, values ed, your major is uh, TLE, and of course, soft side, stay tuned po for our instructions. Okay, here goes our video. Morning in parts of Australia. Inas na ng feeble sa alert level four sa bulkan. Okay, mukang kailangan natin ng fake three. Ayon. 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 Ayon has been a very challenging year for all of us. We have experienced many unfortunate events. As we reflect the actions that we have done, we ask ourselves, what is the best gift I could give the world in this Christmas? I'm gonna make a change for once in my life. Gonna feel real good. Gonna make a difference. Gonna make it right. Yeah. As I turn up the collar on my favorite winter coat, this wind is blowing my mind. I see the kids in the streets with nothing left to eat. Who am I to be blind, pretending not to see their needs? The summer's disregard, a broken bottle top, and a one man
be the change you want to see in the world. That is the best gift you can give this Christmas. From the faculty and staff of Ateneo de Iloilo, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. All right, so that was our video from, of course, Ateneo de Iloilo, headed, of course, by your, by their very talented principal, no, was Doc H, who is, of course, our guest lecturer today. So I hope you have, uh, you can reflect on the message of the video. So again, the, the video said, if you want change to really happen, you should start with the man in the mirror, okay? You should start with yourself. What can you do as a simple citizen of the Philippines, as a citizen of the world, no, um, with everything that we're facing right now, with the pandemic, with all the problems that we're facing, with all the calamities, what can you do and what can you contribute to our society? You know, that was the message of the video, very beautiful message. So I hope you can all reflect on this as we go on and ce we're celebrating still Christmas. And of course, we are um, going to celebrate New Year in the coming days. I hope this becomes part of your New Year's resolution, mga kaguro, okay? Of course, as imparted by Doc H yesterday, uh, teaching does not only stop within the, the four corners of the classroom, teaching should resonate outside of the classroom and whatever we teach our kids, what it, whatever it is that we teach our, our students should be reflected also on the way that we live our lives, okay? So our influence never stops inside the classroom. All right, now again, today we start with, or we continue with your discussion in general science with Doc H. And of course you have seen him. He's not just a school principal, he's very talented. He's a singer, he's a dancer. I know this for a fact because I've worked with him for so many years. He's a licensed civil engineer, of course. He is the former uh, MTOP uh, president. He is a licensed guidance, uh, guidance counselor. And of course, he finished his MA for science education, also his PhD in science education concentration in math at West Visayas State University. He's MED for guidance at the University of the Philippines. And baka makalimutan ko ulit, he considers his best achievement having, of course, his two beautiful and smart daughters. One of them, of course, is now his co-teacher in Ateneo, okay? He, is, he called them his sisters, okay? Kasi halos magkakaedad lang sila. You know, Sir H looks very young. Okay, so again, we present you now with our guest lecturer, and we welcome back uh, Doc H. Hello, Paul. Good evening. Or no, this this is morning in in uh, South Carolina. Let me just uh, adjust my banner, Paul. Okay. Now I see you, Sir H. Yeah. <laughs> I I have nothing to show anymore. But, um, uh, <laughs> Ayan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can see my slides now. Okay, let me share your your slides. Ayan. Okay, ayan, nandiyan na ba? Uh, it seems that the the iPad that I have is telling me that there's a 20 second delay. So whenever I see your responses to the items I will give you, um, well, please forgive me if my response is very late, no, 20, it's late for 20 seconds. So first and mm -hmm. foremost, uh, <laughs> I, I I am a struggling dancer and and singer, so trying hard <laughs> kumbaga. <laughs> si Ma'am Mex yung grabe ma grabe singer na singer talaga. Ma'am Mex siguro next time you can show your ano yung video natin na uh, komenta tayo ng yung yung rent na song. Remember uh, that? Oh yeah. Yes. Well, anyway. Next time, sir. <laughs> next. <laughs> anyway. So I'm sige po. Uh, the floor now, sir H. Okay. Sige po. Sige po. Maraming salamat. So uh, as I've told you, as I've told you, uh, guys, good good afternoon. As I've told you, uh, I, I prepared four sets, and I really thought that I can finish two sets in in one in one meeting in one class. So I just have this wrong sense of time, talaga. And we had even uh, a delay. You no, know? we ended up late. So I hope we here we can end that at three o'clock. Uh, fingers crossed. So anyway, I, I told Ma'am Mex na if possible, I can also share to you the third and the fourth uh, sets no, that I made. So we will still have to discuss that over how can that be possible. Anyway, 
So I, what I prepared to you is set two. If you can still remember, set one, uh, as I promised, is the basic you know, general science. Set two is the same. Uh, we, there will be parts where we will be reviewing some of the things that we have discussed in set one, but there are new things also. So these four sets are progressing. In fact, set four is hardcore physics. So when I say hardcore physics, not the hardcore, hardcore for physical science, but the physics that is that may be the way I look at it enough for let uh, preparation for all those who will take the let, not just those taking physical science or science in general. So again, the process is, I will show you the items. There are seven, 70 items. I'll show you the stem. And then also uh, sometimes I will read the choices, but most of the time I won't anymore due to time limitation. You will give me, as I hope, no. you will give me as much as possible your, your answers. No, uh, I don't know. How can I get the responses here? But siguro Mamex can, can, I don't know, how to, how to check the responses here for now. But anyway, uh, let's start with number one. So I hope that I will see here in your responses. Paano ba to? Mm. Oh, share, live chat. Okay, live chat here. So good afternoon. Ang dami ninyo. Uh, Marilu is here, Danica, and the rest, no? So, okay, let's start, let's start. Um, maybe I would like to advise and suggest to many of you, if you can, uh, try to check if you can get uh, at least half, no? Or 50% uh, or more. If you go beyond that, better. If you get a perfect score, we hope you will. Uh, then we will all celebrate with that. Now, what is the me? What is the reason why uh, I need you to check honestly your score on this? That is also to check. You now, where are you now? It's important for you to know your context so that in the next three months you would know what to do. So, for example, if you get below fifty percent plus one, that is thirty-five and below. If you get thirty-five or lower than that, no, out of seventy in this lecture then maybe that's red flag. So you need to spruce up more your preparation for general science, regardless of what uh, the, uh, what um, major you have. No? Because 35 below score is a little bit uh, alarming. If you get higher than that, then let's celebrate. If you get 90% uh, of the 70%, then better. Okay? So this is, well, ikaw lang naman nakakailam nito. And then you at least you would know how to adjust. Okay, let's start. The first one, uh, if the following forms are molecules closely arranged. No, we knew last last uh, meeting that there were there are five, uh, at least five major uh, states of matter: uh, solid, liquid, gas, plasma, and Bose-Einstein condensate, or simply condensate. So from all these, which among them are loosely uh, have molecules that are loosely arranged. Take note, the term that we use uh, is molecule. Okay, molecule that are molecules that are loosely arranged. Okay? Again, uh, when I check your answers, I check it with twenty second delay. So if I respond, I respond only twenty second after. No, uh, I will see your answer. So Mark already has an answer. Uh, Danica, so uh, as a matter of protocol, please place your the number and then your answer so that we would know that your answer is from that number because of the delay. No? Oh, a lot of answers here, and the answer is uh, gas. So, of course, that is the answer. Some of you might answer plasma, and that is not difficult to understand because we presume that plasma uh, moves, uh, the, the particles of plasma moves faster than uh, move faster than gases however in the stem here we're talking about molecules in plasma the king of, of plasma are ions no uh, which is also part of molecules but are, are not molecules uh, by definition uh, so exactly no? so that is why uh, again the rule of the game is always look for the answer that best describes the stem so 
the context clue here is molecules loosely arranged. So I think all of us have the idea naman, no? uh, which is loosely arranged and which is not. Again, plasma, again, it's loosely arranged, but what is clearly loosely arranged in plasma are the ions. Okay, the, uh, the, uh, the ions there in the, in the plasma uh, world. However, gas here, as far as molecules are concerned, are loosely arranged, more than solid and liquid. So the, I know this is a debatable topic, but always I, I think the cue here, because this is preparation for lab exam, is how to look for the context clues. No? Molecules loosely arranged. So if uh, particles loosely arranged, then maybe plasma can be, can be the right answer. Number two, some starch is added to hot water and shaken. The milky liquid form is known as. Some starch is added to hot water and shaken. The milky liquid formed by uh, mixing starch with what hot water is what? Okay, for number two. Okay, uh, again, 20 seconds delay from the way I'm looking at your YouTube responses. Some starch is added to hot water and shaken. The milky liquid form is known as what? Colloid, solution, suspension, or an emulsion. Okay, we have uh, answers here. Um, well, those who are very fast, thank you for answering immediately as far as uh, the timeline is concerned. Okay, there are C's, A's, B's, so we're divided on this. The answer is suspension because a mixture, because suspension is a mixture in which small particles of a substance are dispersed to our gas or, or liquid, like muddy liquid, for example. And all the others no, that you can think of that uh, are like muddy liquid. So in this case, hot water and uh, starch shaken together will form a suspension. Okay, so maybe we can review this one. Uh, for matter, which is solid, liquid, and gas, so we focus on the most major parts. So they're divided into two. You have pure substances, you have mixtures, and... Uh, Sometimes it's very, it's, it's easier. I don't know with you guys, but I'm a more visual person. Sometimes it's, it's, it's better. You know, it helps a lot if you know more your learning modality. Now in my case, I'm a visual and auditory person. I'm not necessarily kinesthetic. So whenever I prepare for exams or for board exams, uh, I took three board exams. No, So um, most of the time, uh, it seems that I, I observe that I work I learn better if there are, there are colors and there are graphs and there are pictures. So instead of just uh, reading, uh, instead of just listening to or reading things, no. So mas maganda yung ganito. I can understand more the definition if I have the graphs more. So for example, seeing here that pure substances uh, can be chemical elements, binary compounds, and polyelemental compounds. So it will give me the idea what are pure substances. Now here, uh, if there's a question, no, how many elements are there in the periodic table? So, so far, it's not 117, but 118. I think uh, there's something new. Uh, is this one from, uh, I don't know what you call this, organ organismus. That one is 118. Then tenesinin is 117, if I'm not mistaken. And so on. No? So 118 na chemical elements natin as of this point. But anyway, uh, also under mixtures, you have homo, heterogeneous mixtures, colloids, and then composite materials. No? So colloids like clouds, smokes, aerosols, emulsions, or composite materials like uh, uh, wood, yeast, uh, and then dynamite. No? And then also pure chemical substances are, are subdivided to many kinds, no? simples, ionic salts. So for for chemistry majors or for physical science, science majors, these are things that we need to <laughs> we need to memorize or at least understand. No? The glasses, polymers, how they differ from each other. So that's the most important part, not just to enumerate them, but to compare and contrast them. Okay, but more of that later. Uh, one thing very important concepts are alloys. No? And sometimes you're asked, no, uh, yes, bronze is an alloy, but how is it composed? No, what are the elements 
as that composed bronze. So here, 90% copper, 10% tin. Sometimes they will not just ask you uh, what are the elements. Sometimes they will ask you what are the proportion. So maybe this can help. The copper bronze pala is 90% copper and 10% tin. Brass, on the other hand, uh, these are the usual alloys, 70% copper, 30% zinc. And then steel is 99% iron. That's why we usually associate steel to iron, but it's also 1% carbon. Okay, and then stainless steel, uh, iron carbon chromium, then all the others. And then, of course, you can all you can Google all this. Now, what is important is we, we are aware of its composition and its properties and what it's used for. Especially those who are into biking, no? So I, I, I know that you know a lot about alloys. Okay, number three. In filtering a solution, the liquid that passes through the filter paper is the blank. So I, we know that one way to separate two elements or solutions uh, when you mix them, when they're mixed, is through filtering. Okay. So filtering, it depends, of course. Uh, filtering, has a, it must have a particular property for you to be able to filter a uh, solution. So in this case, the liquid that passes through the filter paper is called what? Okay. So we'll see. Uh, number three, I still don't have your answers here. In filtering a solution, the liquid that passes through the filter paper is the blank. Uh, again, maybe it will help if you go back to your experiences in your laboratory activities where you did this uh, filtration. Okay, so it's not just the process but also the parts uh, of the filtration process. No, So our answers here are A, B, D. Okay, and let's see. Let's see what's the correct answer. The answer is a filtrate. So take note of this. No? The solution, the liquid that passes through the filter paper is called the filtrate. Okay? And the paper, that, the one that filtrates is the filter paper. Okay? And, uh, and the one that the filtrate no, uh, will cut, no, will stop from going through the funnel uh, up to the, fil to, the, to the beaker is the solid residue. So, Although it's a little bit trivial, pero you know, uh, sometimes questions like this uh, appear. So it's a little bit confusing because it it's a filtrate. You know? It's a filtrate. So uh, and sometimes we we miss that, and we we equate filtrate to the filter paper. Number four. Let's talk about serious matter, global warming. So global warming is brought about by the increasing amount of blank in the atmosphere. What is it made of? Or what is it cost? Uh, what is the cost of global warming? The increase of the amount of what? Okay. So to others, this one might be an easy answer. Uh, but to others, maybe tayo with the, with the choices. No? Merong oxygen dito, nitrogen, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide. So what do you think is the answer number four? So as global warming, warming is concerned. Okay. Answers, we have A. What else? Miss mm. Joanne no? answered it fast. And then the rest, well. So, so this is nice to know that everybody is aware of this. Carbon dioxide is the reason for global warming. The increase of carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere. And uh, hanggang ngayon, uh, believe it or not, no, meron pang uh, small fraction of number of, of scientists who who believe that global warming is not true. But uh, in the in the documentation, inconvenient truth of Al Gore, in, in many other proof, no graphs uh, shown, uh, not just in in the internet but also in many papers, no literatures, it really show that there's a pattern of increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And that increase in carbon dioxide is directly proportional with the increase in temperature. And we know naman, no, the Earth is, even if it's big, no, it's, it's big in our context, but it's also fragile. And the carbon dioxide content, when it's in, it's in, it, 
when it keeps on increasing, the temperature keeps on increasing, and even a slight increase of temperature will really change no, the the landscape uh, in on Earth. I, I have seen one when we visited, uh, when we, we brought our students in Singapore, there's a science science uh, center there where it showed talaga ano ang mangyayari even if there's only a drop or an increase of one degree centigrade of temperature in the world. So the species that will be killed and the increase uh, and decrease of, of, of uh, water, water, water tides. No? Anyway, the number five, let's go to number five. So it seems that everybody knows the carbon dioxide thing. Number five, the air is said to be humid if it contains plenty of water. So again, we're talking about humidity here. And it said that it's humid if it contains plenty of blank. You know, plenty of blank. So humidity is associated with what? And choose among the four. Okay, let's see. Again, please uh, place the number first and then your answer so that I would know if your answer is on what number or in what number. So number five, uh, Danica answered it first. And for Danica, it's D. Uh, JP, Mark, uh, Jonas, all D. Okay, that's correct. But let us discuss water vapor. Congratulations, it's correct. Humidity. So again, the question might not be this way. So what is important is understanding the concept itself. The humidity is the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. And uh, high humidity means a lot of water vapor no, in on air. And low humidity, humidity means less water vapor present uh, in air. So the humidity level varies with temperature. In this case, the colder the environment, the less the water vapor. And then the hotter the environment, the higher the water vapor content. Why is that? Because remember, water vapor is the hotter version of the H2O no, uh, molecule. And H2O molecule or water can only turn into water vapor if it has a lot of energy that is enough to turn it into uh, vapor, into gas. No? That is why water vapor represents <coughs> uh, excuse me, high temperature. And then humidity is measured as a percentage. Now, there's such a thing as 100% humidity. What does that mean? 100% humidity means the, the air molecules can only, uh, it, it hits already the maximum amount of water vapor it can carry. So kung sabihin mo, 100% humidity, sobrang init yun. No? Uh, so 10% humidity, meaning, on, meaning to say, it, from its 100% capacity, it, it, at that point in time, 10% of its capacity uh, is filled with um, water vapor. No, I'm talking about air capacity. Okay, so number six. Number six. Let's go to number six. Why must a large force be applied to a bowling ball so that it can move at the same speed as a tennis ball? So simple question, no? but uh, again, uh, this might not be simple to others. So please bear with me. But we need to review this one. Why must a large force be applied to a bowling ball so that it can move at the same speed as a tennis ball? It's a simple, practical, commonsensical question, but maybe the explanation is much more important that how, seem, how this seems to be practically uh, commonsensical. So why must a large force be applied to a bowling ball so that it can move at the same speed as a tennis ball? So back it. Why do you need to exert more force on it? Answers? Danica again. Mark, Gray. Or all the three answered C. So the answer is inertia. Correct. So remember, but what, what is, how, oh, wow, a lot of answers. So how is inertia related to mass? Okay, let's see. Um, mass is the amount of matter in an object. That's an elementary definition. But, uh, but the, the, the more uh, updated and elegant definition of mass is it's the measurement of inertia. Uh, maybe we can, we can discuss this one. We can say that inertia and mass are directly proportional somehow. So the higher the mass, the higher inertia, the lower the mass, the lower the inertia. So you know the inertia is the 
tendency of the object to continue to move at a straight path at a constant speed until such time that it is stopped no, by an external force. Or it's also the ability to stay put no, until an external force will move it. So the, the object, if the object is difficult to stop, therefore the object has greater mass. If the object is easy to stop by you, therefore the object has lesser mass. Okay? So does a bowling ball and a tennis ball have the same inertia? Um, what do you think? So do they have the same inertia? Of course, uh, the bowling ball um, has more inertia because it weighs more. No, but not really the weight that we're, that matters the most. No, it's really its capacity to to be stopped. No, it's its tendency, um, it's the difficulty for it to stop when it's moving, and the difficulty for it to be moved when it is at rest. It's easy for us to move the the tennis ball okay diba? it's easy for us to move the tennis ball but the bowling ball is difficult to move because it has more inertia therefore it has greater mass okay number seven shown are two bar magnets what poles of the two magnets facing each other so anong pole to remember i showed this the, in the first set no? we need to understand how the magnetic field works so in this case Look at the look at the iron filings. So like we can assume that there are iron filings and there are two bar magnets. And you see the 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 architecture of the iron filings. What do you think are these two poles? Are they east east or west west? East west, west east, north south or north north, south south, north south, or south north. What do you think? So answers for number seven. We are divided. There are C's, there are D's. Look. They, are they repelling or attracting each other by just the look of the, the graph or at least the figure? Are they attracting or repelling from each other? There are A's, there are C's, there are D's. So Mark says same poles. Okay, if same poles, what does that mean, Mark? So what's your answer if it's same poles? Okay. So repulse, Mark, that's correct. But give me your, ah, yeah, si pala, si ang sabat, ang sagot, <laughs> ang sagot ni Mark. So pwede same pole, pero you answer, you answer mo is A. So uh, there's no east and west, of course, in our, in our magnets, north and south poles, convention-wise. So north, north, or south, south. We don't know if it's really north or south, but at least no, we know that they're repelling, so the answer is C, correct? Let's proceed to number eight. But take, take note, huh? like poles repel, and then like poles attract each other. We're just talking about magnetic poles, no? Iba naman yung gravitational poles, okay? So magnetic poles, take note of this. Eight. A man weighing 700 Newton climbs a flight of stairs 7 meters high. Okay. How much work does he do? So we had work last time or yesterday. Now this time, let's see. Uh, how are we to compute work? So we know that we know the equation of work. And we hope that uh, we can still remember the concept. No? In work, there must be distance involved and there must be force involved. You're climbing upward, simple, because stairs to seven meters high. Siya. So how much work does he do? Okay. 700, 693, 707, 4,900. And the answer is, what's our answer? Uh, medyo uh, delayed tayo, mas delayed tayo kung computation. Well, guess letter C. How wild is wild? <laughs> okay. Well, guess is letter C. Okay. okay. Merong D, merong C. I like the wild guess uh, thought, the idea. So if you don't know talaga, uh, you have to guess. But the guess must be uh, calculated guess. Sabi nila daw, especially in physics, there are many equations that are very simple. And it's either you just add them, 
subtract them, multiply them, or divide them. No, unless otherwise. O siyempre, may mga ibang art, equations na medyo difficult. In this case, force, uh, well, work is equal to force times distance. So all we need to do is to multiply 700 newtons to 7 meters high. So that's why the answer is 4,900 joules. So, yeah, 7 times 7. So, yun nga, no? always take note of this. If you don't know the answer, try to, for, for physics lang, like, I can only speak for physics because there are many, many, especially in electricity and magnetism uh, and also for, for velocities. No, there are equations where all you need to do is to divide or multiply them. So, in this case, if you want to be crazy enough, make a calculated guess, either multiply or divide them. So if you divide 700 by 7, so that's 100 joules. A uh, 100, no? But if you multiply them, it's just 4,900. Okay? So, yeah, that's the guess one, the guess answer. Number nine. Oh, thank you, Joanne, for the equation. Don't, please don't forget the equation. Work is force times distance. And that equation is pregnant with a lot of concept, meaning to say work, cannot be done if there's no distance. If distance is zero, there's no work. No matter how how heavy the load is, no? O kahit, kahit pagod ka na in carrying the load, if you're not moving, then you're not working. Okay, nine. Another computation. A man with a mass of 80 kilograms wants to play seesaw with his son whose mass is only 40 kilograms. To balance the force he exerts with that of his son, how far should he sit from the fulcrum of his son if his son sits 4 meters from it? So, meron tayong siso. Okay. Meron fulcrum dito. Okay. So, the man has a mass of 80 kilograms and wants to play siso with the son. But the son is only 40. And so, let's assume that the son, the son is here and this is 4 meters away. So this is the sun at 40 kilograms. So saan ngayon ilalagay natin si man with 80 kilograms para they will balance each other. Okay? So nine answer is B. And that is uh, using ratio and proportion. Of course, there's uh, another way. What if there are many other people uh, sitting in the CISO? So this is a story on moment of inertia. But anyway, or torque, no? But we compute it this way, uh, 40 times 4 is equal to 80 x or the question mark. And so the question mark or x must be 2 so that the torque going counterclockwise, 80 times 2 is 160, uh, is equal to the torque going clockwise, 40 times 4, which is also 160, okay, units. So thank you. I think all of us got the right answer. But what if there are other forces going down? No? So take note of, of course, we can discuss this more with a whiteboard. And then, uh, mahirap kasi, no? If you add more. Let's say, what if merong, merong another person sitting three meters away to the left, no? From the fulcrum. Uh, and may, may particular weight siya. So there, there's a way to compute that. But, of course, it's, it's, the the torque going counterclockwise must be equal to the torque going clockwise. And when we talk about torque, that means simply the force exerted times the perpendicular distance of the object to the fulcrum. We will, we of course, for physical size, we can discuss that more in detail soon. Number ten, number ten. It seems that number nine, we got the right answer, all of us. Why is the weight of an object on the moon only one six? It's weight on Earth. Now, this one, remember in the first uh, set, we just computed. So if this is your weight on Earth, what is your weight on the moon? So we just divided it into six. In this case, tinatanong, ang reason bakit one-eight lang yung weight mo sa moon kumpara sa Earth? Okay? So what is your answer? And what is the concept behind this? How would you explain why is it that on Earth you are heavier compared to that in the Moon? And why is it that if you are three times heavier when you are in Jupiter and more heavy when you are in the Sun? Uh, theoretically, the answer is, okay, our answer is B. 
P, B. Merong B. Most of the answers are B. May C. Okay. May, may B. So, the answer is B. Uh, 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 C pala. C. Um, you know, bakit C? Okay, bakit C? Uh, the gravitational force on the moon is lesser, is weaker than that of the Earth. So, in fact, weight is higher if the gravitational force where you're at is higher. So, it's the reverse, no? So, one six, uh, one six lang ang weight mo kung sa moon ka compared to the Earth because the moon has less mass than the Earth. So, remember, the gravitational force, if you can still remember uh, ay, the, the universal law of gravitational motion of of Newton that says that gravitational force is equal to big capital G M1 M2 over D squared. What does that mean? That the gravitational force between the two objects is dependent partly on the mass of the object. So the greater the mass of the object, the greater its capacity to pull you down. Meaning to say the greater your weight. So how many times well the earth is is has uh, many times is many times bigger no uh, has bigger mass higher mass compared to the moon that is why the moon has lesser uh, gravitational pull and you weigh less when you're in the moon but again remember mass remains okay mass remains okay what nala ko yung discussion ni ma'am mek uh, malakas po ay sorry um, okay so take note of this it seems that this is significant to many of us because many of us answered B. Uh, the gravitational force of the moon is stronger than that of the Earth. That is wrong. No, The gravitational force of the moon is lesser than that of the Earth. It's the other way around. The greater the mass, again, the greater the mass of the object, the greater its gravitational force, the more that you weigh higher. So take note, kung merong mass, merong gravitational force. Tayo merong mass, we also have gravitational force. But because our mass is not unlike Earth no, or Moon, our gravitational force is insignificant in compared to that of the Moon and that of the, uh, of the Earth. And we can talk about this more when we talk about Einstein's no? uh, um, law, of, uh, law that has to do with explaining gravity in another way. Okay, 11. 11. Which type of rocks is likely to be found in communities near a volcano? Okay, I believe many of us are familiar with this already. No? So, which type of rocks is likely to be found in communities near a volcano? I remember we, we failed to discuss uh, rocks no, uh, in the last discussion. So, in this case, we focus more on rocks. There are three kinds of uh, or types of rocks, and uh, so the three are here except for one. So the answer is: Is it metamorphic or is it igneous? Oh, we are still divided in number eleven. Interesting. So some answered igneous, some answered metamorphic, some answered sedimentary. Good thing nobody answered letter B, lava. Okay, the answer is igneous rock. These are rocks solidified by lava or magma. Okay. Take note, metamorphic rocks are rocks transformed uh, from uh, prehistoric rock. Okay. And then sedimentary rocks. No, uh, these are rocks uh, transformed because of gravity. No, they are sediments and they're made solid because of gravity. Okay. And uh, all other chemical reactions. Okay. So take note of this. Now all rocks, well, we I I, I can still get you some of the slides. No, I call these slides later. No? I call these slides as uh, cycle slides. There are many cycles, no, not just body cycles, but uh, biological cycles, but also uh, earth-wise cycle. Now, in this case, rock cycle. I hope you're familiar of this. Metamorphic rocks like marble uh, turns into sedimentary rocks uh, also in time. And sedimentary rocks can also turn into metamorphic rocks. So there's a cycle uh, that is that are, that is happening. All the rocks that we have seen, uh, logically, with all the billions of years that the Earth has been formed, uh, these rocks 
experience of becoming metamorphic, sedimentary, and igneous rock at one point in time in, in history, in Earth history. Okay? So number 12, remaining traces of plants and animals are known as what? The remaining traces of plants and animals are known as what? Fossils, fuels, fuses, skeletons. Okay. okay. Uh, remember, we are looking for the best answer. We're looking for the best answer here. Okay, we're looking for the best answers. Uh, thank you for the <laughs> 20 second lag talaga. No? So the answers, I can see now answers, correct answers in number 11. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go to number 12. Kindly place your number first, the number that you're answering, and then your answer. So again, Adolfo this time answered, well, not just Adolfo. Well, Janine answered first, then Joanne, then the rest. So the answer is A. Okay. Remaining places of plants. Some might have answered fuels or thought of fuels or uh, skeletons, no? but uh, fossil is the best answer. Number 13, which agency, agency takes care of proper maintenance and use of our forest, minerals, and water? Forest, minerals, and water. Thank you for your correct answers in number 12. So which agency takes care of pro, proper, the proper maintenance and use of forest, many minerals, and water? Okay, medyo may inala, no? So I think everybody knows the answer. <laughs> In number 13, forest, minerals, and water. So the answer is DNR, correct? Okay. And then uh, DNR is Department of Energy and Natural Resources. Sometimes tinatano kung meaning ng, ng acronyms na to. Justice Department of Science and Technology, DPWH. Department of Public Works and Highways. What about NEDA? Ala, ano bang NEDA? What is the meaning of NEDA? So that's National Economic Development Authority. So NEDA. And meri pa, COA, uh, um, ano pa, NBI, PNP, DepEd, all these things might also be asked from you. Uh, FIVOX, diba? So, just remember the meaning and the function of all these government agencies. Okay. Uh, let's go to number 14. An opening of the Earth's crust is what? An opening of the Earth's crust is what? So mountain, peak, valley, volcano. I think this one is easy beachy. <laughs> so... The opening of the Earth's crust, I'll proceed, uh, is volcano. and But more than the answer, letter D, uh, what is important for us to understand how it works. No? So, merong different kinds of volcano. Merong extinct, merong hot spot volcano. Ito yung dire-diretso talaga yung molten, uh, yung, yung, uh, uh, yung magma, diretso pataas. Meron din tinatawag na subduction volcano. A volcano caused by subduction. Ito yung tinatawag natin na subduction area where one part of the plate, Earth's plate, is going down and the other part is uh, on top of it. And this one can cause friction which can maximize no, uh, magma to rise up. And so it causes volcanoes. And that, that, this explains why in the ring of fire there are many volcanoes because there are many subduction, subduction areas no, in terms of uh, plates. But at the same time, Take note of hot spot volcanoes and extinct volcanoes. Meron ding rift volcano. Volcanoes caused by rifts, no? Anyway, so yan. These are, uh, what is convection currents? Now, when you say convection currents, ito yung mga moving magma. And they move because of the temperature difference, no? Uh, remember that objects, uh, molecules move from hot to cold. So take note of that. Molecules move from hot to cold. And so the same thing with magma, no? Kung merong mainit dito, so it looks for a place where it is cold. It moves to the colder area. So parang the same thing. So when you open the refrigerator, take note. Remember, uh, air molecules move from hot to cold. So you open the refrigerator, 
uh, most of us are saying, ah, don't open the refrigerator because the cold temperature is going out. It's not like that. Now, what is happening is the hot temperature is coming in. That's why you are trying to close the refrigerator. The same thing, you close an air-conditioned room. You close an air-conditioned room because you don't want hot air molecules coming in your air-conditioned room. Not the other way around. Not the cold uh, uh, molecules going out. Because, again, molecules move from hot to cold. That's why convection happens. Okay. Number 15. Uh, Oh, may nagta nagtatanong si GJ, eh? GJ. May diamond pa ba dyan sa mga volcanoes? Uh, diamonds were not caused by volcanoes. So uh, some theories are saying that the diamonds were, were caused by either comets or meteors coming in. So that's why now if you look at the geology of, of the Earth, diamonds are are sent on specific areas like South Africa or in, in the others. So that's why that's why they thought na baka meteors coming in. Or maybe there's some specific geological uh, activities that just happens in those places. That's why uh, happen in those places. That's why diamonds uh, happen. No? But yun nga, not necessarily diamond you expect no, in volcanoes. But there are, of course, um, igneous rocks there. Some of the igneous rocks are also valuable. Number 15, which process takes place when matter in a liquid phase changes to gas or gaseous phase? So again, the answer is evaporation. Okay, but more than the answer, I think men, all of us answered it correctly. But more than that, let's talk about the concept. Remember the one at the upper right, we discussed this one. Okay, we discussed this one exactly. Sublimation, deposition. Solid to gas is sublimation. Gas to solid is deposition. We know the rest. But the, the new one here introduced is from gas to plasma, that's ionization. I told you before that plasma has to do with ions that are moving very fast. And then plasma going back to gas is recombination. Remember, if it's from plasma to gas and gas to liquid and liquid to solid, what's happening is that the molecules are releasing heat. But when it's solid to liquid, liquid going to gas and gas going to plasma, or even solid going gas, the function there is that the molecules are receiving more heat in order for it to turn from one phase to the higher and hotter phase. So that is uh, called enthalpy of the system. Now, the one at the bottom here shows you another way of showing the change of phase. Take note of the term in the process. The one in the left side, uh, shows you different concepts like here, for example, from this simple graph, I like graphs more, no, in explaining things. It shows, uh, the, I think the presumption here, this is water. So in one bowl of water, this is how it goes, no, as the temperature increases and uh, as you absorb heat, no, as the one bowl of water absorbs heat, so the temperature increases also in a very direct way, directly proportional slab. But there was, there's a point in this case, zero centigrade, where it will not, it will keep on receiving energy or heat, but it will not increase its temperature. This is the point where we call a fusion point, where it changes from ice, solid ice, to liquid water. Okay, and it takes this amount of kilojoules for it to happen. For one mole of water. And when it reaches that point where it is already in liquid form, it will again absorb more heat. And then at a particular point, of course, as we expected, this is 100 degrees centigrade, or to be exact, 99.96 degrees centigrade. It will again stop from increasing its temperature, but will keep on absorbing heat. Okay, this way, this way. And for one mole of water, it will absorb 40.60. 66 kilojoules of heat in order for it to turn from liquid water to gas molecules or water vapor, we call it. Then again, the temperature will increase as it absorbs energy. So now, what is the importance here? Now, remember that as what I've, I told you, from liquid to from gas to liquid, it takes for a molecule, a mole of, wat, uh, of water to absorb more heat for it to go up. Why does it, why must it absorb heat? 
in order to turn from solid to ga to liquid because remember as more as as the higher as the higher the heat you absorb the more energy you have thermal energy the more that the molecules move faster when the molecules move faster and faster it changes its phase okay from the from solid which is uh, where the molecules are moving relatively slower to liquid the molecules are moving relatively faster and the same thing when it turns from liquid to gas so it needs more energy for it to turn into gas and to give more freedom of movement now for it to transform on the reverse side instead of absorbing heat it should release heat so the same manner when when it's gas to liquid it should release this amount of heat okay 40.66 kilojoules of heat and the same manner when it goes from liquid to to gas or if if the if the temperature is decreased no if, if you want the temperature to to decrease you also have to release heat now that is very important in terms of entropy and enthalpy now another thing which is easier which takes more heat uh more work uh turning solid to liquid or turning liquid to gas which takes more energy you no know, to to turn from one phase to the other from as you can notice it's easier to turn solid to liquid or to turn liquid to solid than to turn liquid to gas or gas to liquid as you can see here this is the energy you no know, the longer the longer this one that means the longer the, the greater the energy that you need in order to transform it from one phase to the other that's very important the concept because again we are preparing for let questions can be different the topic and the concept might be the same but the question might be turned something else example tatanong sayo amo na yun nga yun sinabi ko uh, which which takes more heat turning solid to liquid liquid to solid or liquid to gas or gas to liquid yon ganun anyway uh, also take note of the concept of specific heat which is the energy added to unit of mass to increase its temperature by 1 degree centigrade but there's no phase change uh, going on here okay the the greater the specific heat the greater the thermal energy you need for the temperature of the substance to increase or to decrease no uh, the if you, if the temperature decreases that's also the number the the heat that you need to release it no? so this the heat that you need to change the phase from gas to liquid or liquid to gas is called latent heat of vaporization and the heat that you need to change the phase of a substance from liquid to solid or solid to liquid is latent heat of fusion so i hope some of you are have taken a picture of this and some of you uh, have at least have a good review on the matter number 16 oh, medyo nakakapagod yan ha. number 16 which process takes place when matter in a solid phase changes to gas with a gaseous phase without passing through the liquid state? Okay, let's see. Okay, your dry ice. No, dry ice is one example of uh, turning from solid to uh, from liquid to solid. The mothball is one example of turning solid to uh, uh, by the way um ano pala mothball is from solid to gas and then dry ice is from gas to to solid okay which process takes place gas to liquid so the answer is sublimation okay gas to changes of gaseous phase are from process when matter solid to liquid so solid to liquid is sublimation without passing through gaseous phase solid when matter in a solid phase changes to ah uh, changes to gas no solid to gas without passing to liquid state no confuse ako doon ah kaya nga sublimation is from solid to gas okay so example is mothballs and gas to solid example is dry ice okay so we discussed this one kanina so what if it alone ko if one to if you want to decrease the temperature what must you do 
you will release the heat or will you absorb heat? Again, if you want to decrease the temperature of a substance, are you to absorb or release heat? Okay. If you want to decrease the temperature of a substance, are you to absorb or release it? So the answer is, of course, you have to release heat. Again, releasing heat decreases the temperature. Absorbing heat increases the temperature. Please take note of these uh, concepts. So temperature are dependent on, um, on the release or, or absorption of heat. But what is that point where even if you are absorbing or releasing heat, the temperature remains? These are the latent heat. These are the latent heat of fusion point or latent heat of vaporization point. Okay. Number 17. Oh, thank you for your answers. Release the heat. Yan. Uh, important yan. No? So please uh, put it in your mind kasi mga favorite na mga questions to eh. The release of heat means lower the, the, the lowering of temperature, the absorption of heat increasing the temperature. Uh, but there are points where temperatures don't increase or decrease anymore as you release or absorb heat. These are latent heat of fusion or evaporation. These are points where the phase is trying to change no, uh, from one phase to the other. Number 17, device used to measure temperature. The answer is thermometer, of course. We all know that. But sometimes, who knows, maka pictures will be shown to you and you have to identify what that, that is all about. So before, it's easier to identify one, one device to the other. But now, they're digital. And sometimes, they're all in one digital uh, uh, what's this device. No, So we have temperature here, thermal scanners. But we also have... This one is a barometer. This uh, or this one is this one is a hygrometer, and this one is a barometer. Okay. So this one is a hygrometer, but it also uh, gives you the temperature. Okay. Before it's really difficult to measure all these concepts, but now uh, we it's there in our cell phone, no? So we ever we have some activities anymore so that makes that gives us less expense in terms of laboratory supplies number 18 which of the following clouds produces precipitation anong nagpapaulan okay. which of the following clouds produces precipitation okay so, kaya. so let's see. Napang sagot. Again, 20 seconds delay. Let's see. Cumulus nimbus stratus. So let's see. The answer is nimbus. Okay, C. So again, no, this is grade 6, grade 7. Uh, and I admit, no, even I myself, no, forget this one. Because, you know, do, uh, it, it happened years ago. A lot of years ago, and sometimes we forget the matter. But we know, we know this already. No, we can already observe that in nature. So, take note of the different kinds of clouds. Uh, they are they can be combined also at the same time. No, cumulus, stratus. No, uh, so we we cumulus nimbus that that goes to show that it's raining. But sometimes cumulus is enough for it to show that it's raining because it's dark and and thick no so this is nimbus clouds they have grayish black color okay. 19 19 which of the following sources of energy comes from animal manure agriculture waste and garbage okay. uh, i love discussions on energy because well that's that's part of my dissertation and the energy is really uh, cool no? to, to discuss over into study. Which sources comes from animal manure? And I think we we are familiar with this. There are context clues. So the answer is uh, biomass. But more than the answer, again, maybe uh, maybe we can review how to differentiate the the different the different energy source. Okay, everybody knows the answer, biomass. 
this is how complicated the biomass can be. But you know, biomass, geothermal, water, or uh, what water or or well, water, wind. No, they uh they look different. But one thing that uh, might be similar to all the four is the use of generator. So what is important is that uh, all these these four can turn the turbine. How for wind they use the wind energy, kinetic energy for water. So the water flows from potential energy; it turns into kinetic. So it flows to the turbine, which is connected to the generator. Geothermal. What happens in geothermal in biomass is using heat, uh, using enormous amount of heat. No, in this case, geothermal from the bottom of the earth biomass by heating. No, uh, the the animal manure, agriculture waste, and garbage, heating water inside a boiler so the, the water will eventually go and pass through uh, the turbine. And the turbine, because of the heat, you no know, pressure from heated water, it will also turn the generator on. And the generator will eventually convert uh, or induce electricity from it. So it's nice also to see the difference, but also the commonality among in between the two. The, the four, among the four. 20. Let's talk about geothermal plants. I think I gave you the answer already. Makes use of thermal energy from where? The answer is underground. Okay. There are many kinds of thermal plants, but this is one thing that the Philippines must be proud of because uh, the Philippines is one of the forerunners of geothermal power plants. I am really even confused why uh, less and less budget is given to geothermal power plants. That's one thing, one natural resource that we are very rich at. No, So we have people from Negros would know how important geothermal power plant in Panimpin power plants. People in, in the Luzon area, in Albay, and also those in, in, the, in, in eastern Visayas, they know how important geothermal power plants for them. Okay? Heat underground. Number 21. Which type of energy is present in a storage battery? We discussed this yesterday, so I presume we know already the answer. Uh, which type of energy is present in a store battery, storage battery, either wet cell or dry cell? So the answer is chemical energy. So the one on top here is a dry cell battery. And then the other one at the bottom is a wet cell battery. So the only difference, the other one is dry, the other one is is wet or using liquids, but the, the concept is the same, no? Uh, there's a, the, the, uh, the difference in the two chemicals present in these two batteries uh, will cause the, elec the electron to move, thus creating electrical energy, okay? So number 22, which kind of energy does food contain? Thank you for your answers. Which, number 22, which kind of energy does food contain? Maybe another one that we also discussed yesterday. So I'll spin this out. The kind of energy does food contain? Pwedeng, may mga ibang, ibang food na may nuclear energy dyan. Believe me you, no? mga radiation, radiated uh, food. Meron din iba na uh, merong ibang passing energy, but mainly it's electrical, di ba? And... Biology majors know why, no? And especially, especially if we talk about ATPs and metabolism. So it's basically we eat in order for us to produce heat, and that heat is converted to uh, a lot of a lot of, a lot of forms of energy. Okay, uh, transform into a lot of forms of energy. Okay, and so that's why when we talk about uh, I need energy, so we need carb, I need fats, uh, and all those things. These are sources of energy. Okay, 23. Which of the following is an element? Another easy thing. By the way, thank you for your answers. Again, no, I would like to invite everyone to focus on, on the choices, the right and the wrong choices, and also on the, the concept, no? not necessarily on the answer. But if you are wrong, please try to give a... Uh, footnote on that the pick and maybe invest more time to review over it. Which of the following is an element? 
The answer is nitrogen. Correct. Okay. Answers are all correct. Okay. So an element is a pure substance that cannot be broken down to other substances by physical or chemical means. So there are, uh, as what I've said, there are about 118 known elements as of the moment, uh, as of this time, no? And uh, we expect more elements to be discovered uh, by scientists in the laboratory. 92 of which occur naturally, they're all discovered, but those upper, upper 92, uh, they are, they're discovered, no? Uh, in a very, in the laboratories most of the time. And the element has con uh, a unique name and symbol. Okay. Okay, number 24, what is the lowest part of the atmosphere? What is the lowest part of the atmosphere? Lowest part of the atmosphere, again, this is a review on uh, last time or yesterday. So the lowest part is the troposphere. We're talking about atmosphere here, huh? So troposphere, by the way, the picture is not on scale. Imagine that the atmosphere of the Earth is just here, very thin here. Parang onion skin lang kalaki compared to the Earth, if this is how big the Earth is. But its parts are like this, pinalaki lang natin para clear sa atin no, where these are uh, placed. No? What are they for? So troposphere where planes usually pass, and then stratosphere, ito yung mga weather balloons, and then usually, higher than stratosphere. A little bit higher is the mesosphere, where comets uh, are burnt, and then aurora borealis and the uh, aurora australis at the southern portion of the Earth. Excuse me, sorry. Um, in the thermosphere, from the term it's a thermo, and then exo from the term X, no? Exo, uh, outside, no? Meaning these are where the satellites are, okay? And uh, of course, there is the outer, the outer space. Pure water boils at. This is a little bit tricky. Pure water boils at. Oh, not necessarily tricky if you're familiar with the, with the boiling point of water. So the boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade. Okay, that's the easy part. But sometimes you're asked, no, ano yung condensation point ng water? The point where it transforms from liquid to, uh, from, from gas to liquid. Okay. So the condensation point is also 100 degrees centigrade. Take note of that. That is where at 100 degrees centigrade or 99.9, that is where water changes from gas to liquid or liquid to gas. So it's the boiling point and also the condensation point. In the same manner, the zero degree centigrade is also the freezing and the melting point of water. But take note also of its Fahrenheit equivalent, you know? 212 degrees Fahrenheit and 32 degrees Fahrenheit. If you memorize this, it will come in handy later on no if questions like what is the what is the boiling point of water in fahrenheit may mga ganun. Or what is the freezing point of water in fahrenheit so at least we know we're familiar with the, the with the number okay uh, also there's no excuse no whatever your your major is there's no excuse of you not knowing how to convert no, temperature scales no, from centigrade to Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit to centigrade. We also know that if you convert centigrade to Kelvin, we just add 273. Or if you're in engineering, we say 273.5 is in order for centigrade to be converted to, to Kelvin. Sometimes we convert Fahrenheit to Rankine, no? another temperature scale, Rankine. So we just add 460 degrees. So, but this one is very important. Please try to remember the equation on how to convert Fahrenheit to centigrade and vice versa. Okay, also take note of some important temperatures, okay, especially the one of waters. 
So I have discussed the finite centigrade relationship, but please also take note of absolute zero. No? Absolute zero is zero Kelvin. And can, as you can see here, Kelvin is the only scale with no degree there because it's an absolute number. Okay. But zero Kelvin also means negative 273.15 degrees centigrade or negative 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit or zero Rankine. Okay. But Kelvin is the SI unit of temperature. Okay. So the most abundant gas in the air is, that's number 26. What's the most abundant gas in the air? The most abundant gas in the air. Okay, so you have carbon dioxide, helium, nitrogen, oxygen. We're talking about gas in the air, not uh, in soil or, or in space. But most abundant gas in the air. So space naman, siyempre iba. No? We know what is the most abundant gas in the air. No? Hygiene, no? the next helium, etc. But then, if you talk about soil, uh, well, it depends on what soil you are talking about. But in air, it is correct, nitrogen. Some answered uh, oxygen. Oxygen is just 21% on air. Nitrogen is 78%, as it, at least no, of a, based on my source. And then argon is 0.9. And then we have uh, 0 to 4% for water vapor and carbon dioxide, 0 0.037. Okay? So it's important for us to see not necessarily the exact percent, but at least the proportion. So 78% or almost 80% for nitrogen, etc. And this one changes in time. I remember there were moments in the Earth's uh, history where oxygen is three times as much. And sometimes oxygen is almost uh, absent at all. Okay. So at least now, our 21% is enough habitable for humans and other mass and animals. 27. Okay, let's see if we can, uh, if we can uh, apply what we have learned yesterday or what we have reviewed yesterday. If there are nine protons in the nucleus of an atom, how many electrons are there in the shell? In the atomic shell, pila or how many do we have as electrons if the protons in the nucleus of an atom is, 19, is 9 or 9? It counts. The answer is, it's either you know the answer or you can give a crazy guess. So the answer here is 9 because in normal terms, the number of protons is the same as the number of electrons. Okay. So some crazy answers is C, which is twice as much as the number of protons. By the way, something very interesting with, with electrons and protons. No, electrons are far smaller than protons, thousands smaller than protons. Uh, and uh, if, if, the, uh, if the nucleus with the proton is, is as big as my fist, so the electron is about a kilometer away from my fist. So that's how how vacuum almost almost made of space, no, uh, an atom is. Okay, 28. Which layer of the atmosphere returns radio and TV broadcast back to earth? So which layer of the atmosphere returns radio and TV broadcast back to earth? Oh, this is interesting. What do you think? Is that part or layer of the atmosphere that returns uh, radio and TV waves back to Earth? That's 28. Okay. So, may mga sagot. The first to answer is Mark. Then Ramon. With different answer. Then Ray. Tatlo sila. Iba-iba yung answer. Ano kaya? But that's nice, no? You guess. And uh, when I took the exam, the let, yeah, I also guessed some of the <laughs> items because I didn't know them. So 
sometimes calculated guesses are help. So let's see. But I'm sure others are sure of their answer. So let's see. The answer here, okay, is Iona Spear. Okay. Remember? So, uh, oh, wala palang wala dito yung Iona Spear, no? Uh, Iona Spear is somewhere at the middle of uh, Mesosphere and Thermosphere. So, nasa Mesosphere and uh, ther Mesosphere and Thermosphere, somewhere here, yung Ionosphere, which is a subpart, no? A subpart, a sublayer of an atmosphere. So, Ionosphere is a critical link in the chain of Sun Earth interaction. This region is what makes radio communications possible. Okay? So, somewhat partly in the Thermosphere and Mesosphere. So, I forgot to include that in the, in the parts. Okay, 29. Which of these properties can identify a substance? So, meaning, when you see this property, regardless, uh, even if you don't know or if you haven't seen the substance, the substance, you would know what kind of substance it is. So, anong property among the four that will give you the substance? This is interesting. An item. Which property can identify a substance? Is it color? When you see the color of the object, alam na kung ano substance yun. Is it density, mass, bigat ba, or volume? Ang volume ba ng isang substance, malalaman mo na kung anong substance yun. Okay. We have uh, faith and race answers, which are different than Leian, uh, Mary. Okay, iba, iba yung sagot natin. Pero this is an interesting uh, topic. No? So the answer is density. Bakit density? Bakit density ang makapag-identify ng substance even if hindi mo pa makita yung substance? So this, look at the table here, table 1.4, where uh, you see the density of different substances at 20 degrees centigrade. Kasi density changes in terms uh, when the temperature changes. Now how? Because if the temperature is lower, then the the molecules of the object, most of them, except water, at a particular point. Now, the molecules also, uh, essentially, are going together, no, near to each other. So the density becomes high. But if the temperature is increased, then the density becomes less. That's one concept that we need to understand also. All we need to do is just, just imagine the molecules. If it's hot, then the molecules would like to move more. Therefore, making the substance less dense kasi lumalaki yung volume. Remember the equation of density? Volume is inversely proportional to density. So, but if the density, the, the temperature is is low, then the molecules would like to be with each other more. Just like tayo din, no? kung cold, we want we want to be uh, less open no? because we want to, to secure our heat. So in this case, at 20 degrees centigrade, these are the densities. No? For water, the density is 1. 0 0.00, okay, at 4 degrees centigrade. Uh, interesting with water is that beyond 4, below or above 4 degrees centigrade, water expands already. But the rest, the lower the temperature, the, more, the closer the molecules together, the lesser the volume. The greater the temperature, the more, the, the greater the volume. So in this case, by just looking at the density, you know what that is all about. So if it's 2.70, the assumption here is there's no other substance that has a density of 2.70 at 20 degrees centigrade aside from aluminum. So uh, Archimedes, when he was asked to check whether the, the crown is really made up of gold pure or not, he used this concept in order to identify if it's really gold or not. So gold's density is 19.3. Meaning to say, it's 19.3 more dense than water. Remember, water is 1.0. So, uh, platinum is the densest from the list. What is the least of all is charcoal. And remember, if it is less dense, it floats the, in liquid. No? That is uh, denser than it is. So, charcoal floats, remember? If charcoal is placed with water in water, then it will float. If ethanol, if if ice is placed in water, remember ice is 
lesser in terms of density. So therefore, that's why ice also floats in water. Okay. Number 30. Water rises faster in what? Oh, there's a concept I miss. Why it rises faster uh, in a particular situation, but it rises faster in what? What kind of situation? Okay. So that's 30. Water rises faster in what? Uh, I'm still waiting for answers. Okay. Water rises faster in, remember yesterday, it rises faster in very fine tubes. Okay. So the answer is D. The answer is D. Remember the one I showed to you, a uh, list of tubes? The thinner the tube is, the higher that water rises. Of course, if it's mercury, it subsides, no? it depresses down. So the, the concept here is capillary action. Okay, very good. So again, no, if your answers are different, uh, if your answer is different, then try to figure it out why. So water rises faster in thin tubes. 31. All the acids contain the element what? This is important. Uh, all the acids contain what element? I think I discussed this one yesterday. But I have to move fast. No, forgive me if I have to move fast. We still have 70. We still have uh, 40 more items. And we only have about 30 minutes. Acids contain the element hydrogen. Take note. No, take note. Uh, that uh, normally... Um, acids contain hydrogen. So, so if you have some uh, different list of, of uh, compounds and you are asked which among these compounds without even the name is uh, an acid, so at least you would already, that, that's, that's one answer, one question answered. I look for a compound with hydrogen because most with no hydrogen may not anymore be an acid. So see, this concept can already help you in choosing the right answer, even if you don't know what an acid is. Okay? What an acid in terms of uh, its chemical name is. Okay, 32. The gas which is given off by all animals is called what? Animals, that includes us, diba? So what gas do we give off? Or do other animals give off? Okay. So I think... Uh, Clear sa atin, bakit carbon dioxide? So we inhale oxygen and we exhale carbon dioxide. Okay, the same with other animals, mammals especially. Okay, so which element, number 33, which of the following is not an element? I think this one is, uh, thank you for your answers, carbon dioxide. Everybody got the right answer. Number 33, which of the following is not an element? Is it... Uh, uh, calcium, well, I will say the, the list first later when the answer is revealed. Is it A, B, C, or D? And the answer is, oh, kaya lang lumalabas yung mga answers sa 22, 22nd day nga. So, 33, which not an element? The answer is CO or carbon monoxide. Okay, 34. Which of the following converts radiant to electrical? Which of the following converts radiant energy to electrical energy? Dry cell, electrical cell, solar cells, wet cell. By the way, take note before I forget, there are conversions of energy from one form to the other that are not possi possible to happen directly. For example, mechanical energy can easily can be, can be turned into electrical energy using a correct device. But you cannot just transform mechanical energy directly to nuclear energy or mechanical energy to light energy. It doesn't transform directly that way. So what happens is that you transform the mechanical energy first to a particular energy where it can transform into <coughs> excuse me, solar energy. So you depend mechanical direct to solar or solar to mechanical and the same thing with mechanical to nuclear. So there, there are conversions of energy which can be done directly, but there are others which cannot be done directly. It, can, it goes through another form first 
to one form first before it goes to another form. Okay, so the answer here is solar cells, correct? Okay, again, no energy conversion can be can happen directly or indirectly. Number 35, which material does not allow heat to pass through? Okay, this has to do with insulation and conduction. If the material does not allow heat to pass through, is it an insulator or a conductor? Okay. Uh, so by the way, an insulator in a conductor, uh, insulation or conduction is not a 100% proof thing. So for example, what I mean is that if the element is an if the substance is an insulator, it doesn't mean that it is an insulator 100%. No, it is, it just, what it says is that it's just more of an insulator than a conductor because all materials can be conductors, uh, at least majority of them, and all materials can be insulators at one point, at one condition. For example, water. Water can be a good conductor of electricity, but water can also be a good insulator of electricity or insulator or conductor of heat. So it depends on the condition and situation. So in this case, what material does not allow heat to pass through? The answer is rubber. Okay, at a particular point, remember we're talking about mentions here, but rubber at a particular point can also turn into a conductor of electricity. So, but rubber is more associated with insulation. Okay, especially in unearthly matters. Okay, 36. Reflected sound. Anong tawag sa reflected sound? Okay. Uh, we have acoustic, echo, sonar, vibration. Okay. Uh, thank you, Rachel, for answering insulator. <laughs> okay, rubber, etc. So number 36 na tayo. A reflected sound is called what? And, uh, okay. Huh? May sagot si Lizelle. Bakit N yung sagot mo? Bakit N sagot ni Lizelle? Anyway, so it's not sonar, anak, uh, but a reflected sound is called an echo. Okay? So on letter B. Okay, so that's the reflected sound. And when it hits the wall, so it's echo. But uh, also take note of concepts like acoustics or sonar. Sonar is the the, the equipment and the process. No, acoustic is the science of sound. Waters affects the potential energy of the object. Okay. Remember, in problems like this, again, if you don't know the factors or you're not familiar, you're not so sure of it, go back to its definition, go back to the concept, or go back to the equation. Ano bang equation ng potential energy? Mass, mgh, mass times acceleration due to gravity or g times the height, okay, of the object, perpendicular height with respect to the, well, if it's on earth, uh, to the floor, no? So, well, to the earth's, to the level, no? to the sea level. So, in this case, what, since potential energy is mgh, so what are the factors affecting potential energy? Okay, so answers are all, all answers are A except for some with B. Okay, so the answer is C. <laughs> so force distance, remember distance, MGH, although distance is still H, and MG can still be force, but it's not the exact answer. So A is the near, one of the near answers. But it's not the most correct answer because this can be different. No, it cannot, it not, it's not all the time height. Force is not all the time weight. But for potential energy, it's weight and height. Bucket weight. Weight is mg, diba? mgh. Potential energy is mgh. So mg means weight, mass times g. And height is the h in the equation potential energy equals to mgh. That's why c is the answer for number. 37. Now, please be reminded of the different equations for kinetic and gravitational potential energy. Again, we, be, we are talking about gravitational potential energy here, not the other kinds of potential energy. So kinetic energy is one half mv squared, v being velocity, and m being mass. 
And gravitational potential energy, or GPE, is mgh. Okay, G here is 9.8 meter per second squared. If you're looking for uh, the GPE of an object in a particular planet, then the G changes. Or the G can change if you are not at sea level, if you're on Earth. So by the way, the more you are away from the center of the Earth, the more that the G goes down. So 9.8 is the maximum G at the level, at Earth's level, uh, sea level. And then as you go on top of the mountain, the G lowers down, maybe 9.7 meter per second squared. So do you weigh less if you're on top of the mountain, relatively speaking, compared to if you're at sea level? Yes, because the G is lower when you are farther from the center of the Earth. Okay? But the difference is just uh, small. That's why when you are far away from the Earth, so your, your weight is also less. 38. A boxer who wants to have more energy from his coming bout should eat what? Kasi kailangan mo ng energy, more energy. So nung dapat kakainin mo in order for you to have more energy when you eventually uh, go inside the boxing canvas, the ring. Okay? So the answer here is, some of you might have a different answer. Okay. Okay, 38, the answer is kamote. Okay, not dahil, dahil sa utot, no? <laughs> kamote being a carbohydrate, carbo. So it's classified as energy-giving food. May carbo din si ice candy, I know, no? Pero not enough compared to kamote. Okay? Chicken, more on uh, protein. Uh, fruits, more on vitamins. Okay, 39. The highness and lowness of sound. We're now talking about the physics of sound. The highness and lowness of sound is called what? Okay. So 39, the highness and lowness of sound. We still have 31 items. Too. Okay. The highness and lowness of sound is speech. But remember on the concept of no, pitch is the highness and lowness of sound. It's also the number of uh, waves at a particular time. And in the wave like this, the highest point is called the crest or the peak, the crest or the peak. And the distance from the neutral center to the upper part to the crest is called the amplitude. And the distance between two points that are in phase, or in this case, Trough to trough, peak to peak, or two points that are in phase, like this one and this one, is called wavelength. Trough, okay, is the lowest point of the wave. Frequency is also uh, similar to pitch. And some of you might argue that, sir, my answer is correct naman. Frequency is the uh, number of waves naman a particular time. Remember, uh, a pitch is an example of frequency, but a pitch is a term used for sound. Always look at the stem. The stem talks about sound, therefore, the most correct answer is pitch. Okay, and loudness has to do with directly with amplitude. The higher the amplitude, the louder the sound gets. Number 40. Thank you for the answers. When a violent storm occurs over the West Indian region, including the Caribbean Sea, it's called a hurricane. But when it's formed in the Pacific, what do you call that violent storm? Okay, this is interesting because uh, a violent a storm, um, although it's violent, but it's the Earth's way to stabilize itself, no? Uh, because of the difference in temperature from one far region to another far region. So your answer in number 40, Where there are these, 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 I think everybody knows the answer. So typhoon. So typhoon happens in the Pacific. Uh, then hurricane, when we are talking about the West Indian region, like India, uh, Sri Lanka, etc. Then the Caribbean Sea is also hurricane. Well, sometimes they call it uh, cyclone in the Atlantic, no? in the U.S. They call it cyclone sometimes. Okay. Now, let's go to number 41. 
A spider eating an ant is an example of what? Spider eating an ant. Is it commensalism? Is it competition? Is it predation? Or symbiosis? No? Okay. Spider eating an ant. 41. Ay, iba al talagang magot. Ruel, sagot agad. Thank you, Ruel. Okay, and his answer is correct. Predation. But far more than predation, let's try to understand the rest no, of relationships no, between organisms. So, symbiosis. So, these are symbiosis, no, permanent association between two different organisms. There's such a thing as neutralism, where two organisms live together, pero they're not affected by each other. No? There's such a thing as mutual. These are also, pwede nyo ring tanongin sa sarili nyo. Ganito rin ba yung relasyon ko sa boyfriend ko, sa girlfriend ko, or sa friend ko? So, are we, are we experiencing or practicing mutualism where we are parang uh, uh, friends with benefits? Two organisms living together and both benefit from each other. Or is it commensalism? Is our relationship commensalism? Two organisms living together, one is benefited and the other one is not being affected with the benefit. So I'm helping you, but I'm not affected no, with the relationship. Pwede bang ganun? Possibly ba sa isang relasyon yun? Then parasitism, ito yung pinakamasakit. Dalawang organisms will living together, pero... One is benefited, called parasite. The other one is harmed, called the host. Ganyan ba yung relasyon ninyo sa isa't isa? Or nila sa isa't isa? Pangit yun, no? Parasitism. Well, another relationship is synergism, where two or more microorganisms may work together and team up to produce a disease that neither could cause by itself. No? So, mga example nito, uh, although synergism is possible, but this can also work on a negative way, like uh, uh, either formulation of medicine, medicinal uh, substance, or pwede rin forming of a parasite, or uh, for forming of a virus pala, a deadly virus. So, the whole thing is symbiosis. Is it parasitic like that in the in the free? Or uh, commensalism, no? like the Spanish moss in the tree? Um, or mutualism, or like the rhino, the tick, no, in it. Or is it uh, predation? No, uh, pangit pa yung predation, no, klaseng relasyon yun, kasi kinakain yung isa, no? So, the prey. Uh, or parasitism, na example, mosquitoes, our relationship with mosquitoes, no? So, parasite. Or like the leech in our, if yung linta, no, with our body. So, it's, it's parasitism. So, better if we see the difference in the relationship between the two. Okay, friends with benefits. Yes, Danica, friends with benefits. So, kung friends with benefit, ano ba yan? Uh, that's mutualism. Okay. So, number 42. Huge waves that accompany volcanic eruptions and earthquakes under the sea are cold. I hope everybody can answer this correctly. Huge waves that accompany volcanic eruptions and earthquakes under the sea. So take note of the cue. Waves, volcanic eruptions, or earthquakes, and then under the sea. Okay? And so the answer is tsunami. Okay? I hope everybody gets this right. If not, well, take note no, uh, of this air. Tidal waves are just waves, no? Uh, uh, produced by the usual uh, tidal increase or decrease, no, and the difference in temperature. And the steam burst, makikita natin yan, no, in many parks, like sa Yellow Park in the U.S., and volcanic bombs, no, mga accumulated, accumulated heat energy, and they eventually explode. Okay, thank you for your answers. Number 43. Molten rock material expelled outside the Earth's surface. Molten rock material expelled outside the Earth's 
surface. So here, remember, outside the Earth's surface, and it's molten rock material, so it's hot, and so the answer is lava. I think, I think we all know why, no? And the difference between a lava and a magma. So magma is inside. When it goes out, it becomes a lava, like this one. Okay. Now, 44. Rocks formed at the bottom of the sea are what rocks? If these rocks are formed at the bottom of the sea, they stay there in time and because of gravity and other chemical reactions, they stay there, it becomes a rock. So it's what kind of rock? It is sedimentary rock. Again, let us review. Igneous rocks are rocks solidified from magma or lava due to extreme heat. Metamorphic rocks are rocks transformed of existing rock type, and it's also formed due to extreme heat and pressure. Sedimentary rocks are rocks formed at the bottom of the sea, among examples, and other form uh, because in other places because of gravity and uh, the reaction. 25. If there is no atmosphere in the planet, what will happen? Which of the following conditions will occur? What will happen to the planet? Okay. Will will there be absence of weather, photosynthesis, essence of oxygen, or transmission of sound? Okay. Kung walang atmosphere yung planet, which condition will happen? Absence of weather, photosynthesis, presence of oxygen, transmission of sound. Okay, so our answer number 45, merong sagot tito, I think Tanika, Midef, and uh, Jennifer, and Elizel, Chari, Norlin, Marielle are correct. If there's no atmosphere, then there's no weather. No, uh, the weather is caused by the atmosphere, no, the, the movement of the atmosphere from hot to cold and all the other movements, the convection of the atmosphere. So absence of weather. 46. Experts in analyzing weather data and other relevant information are called what? So what are these experts that are good in analyzing weather data? Okay. So maybe we are familiar with the term. They are the meteorologists. Met 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 metallurgists are good in terms of uh, studying metals, min minerals, mineralogists, pathologists for rocks. No? Okay. So, what is the difference between rocks and, and minerals? Take note of this. Rocks are composed of one or more minerals. So, pwede, pwede ba na isang mineral lang rock din? Yes. No, parang Venn diagram yan. A rock can be a mineral and a mineral can be a rock. But not all rocks are minerals and not all minerals are rocks. And minerals are more homogeneous and crystalline in structure and they are naturally occurring. And rocks are are composed of two or more minerals. 47. I'm sorry, I have to move fast. A particular place where an organism can be found is what? A particular place where an organism can be found is its what? Okay. Ecosystem, habitat, niche, or surroundings. Okay. This is still earth science. No? A place where an organism can be found is its Okay, habitat. Okay, habitat. B, correct. Michael, correct. LV, correct. So, habitat. And uh, there are many animal habitats. So, merong wetlands, merong polar lands or habitat, merong rainforest. Sa atin, uh, ta, sa dito sa Philippines, more, we have more rainforest, we have less of a desert, but we have good marine habitat and we also have uh, areas where we have grasses I, is it grassland but grassland is usually more in africa okay and then also thought of that community the meaning of that the habitat which is part of the uh, community is part of and the greater the greater the greater uh, world which is ecosystem okay 48 which of these refers to a biological community of interacting organisms and their physical environment? 
biological community of interacting organisms and their physical environment. So the organisms and the physical environment, what does that refer, refer to? I think uh, we're ready for the answers. Correct. Sagot ni Roel. Danica, and then Benefe, that's ecosystem. Okay. The ecosystem composed of living organisms, the biological community, and their physical environment. 49, which is a biotic factor in an ecosystem. Biotic, so there's a term there from the term bio. I will, I will move this one fast because I know from the term bio, by, from the biotic factor, you know already the answer, which is three. Okay? These are factors that affect and nurture the existence of life. No, three is one example. Okay, uh, in the biotic factors, there are three different factors, producers, consumers, and decomposers. And you know naman how to differ, differentiate the three. Okay, 50. All the members of a single species inhabiting at a given location make up what? Okay. Thank you for the answers. Very fast, no? All the members of a single species inhabiting a given location make up a uh, or an what? Members of single species. So always take note of the stem. No? Members of a single species. Or remember, it's not species, but species. So there's no such thing as species, but species. Okay, even if you're talking about one of person, so one animal. So population is the answer. And under uh, the greater one is called, uh, uh, well, the smaller one is the organism. Then from the greater one, single species, like many of you are USA, no? in this case, so that's population. But if you are with the rest of the other animals, it's called the community and the ecosystem includes also the physical uh, place where you are. And the biosphere is the, we call Earth. Uh, 51, movement of a rock bed along a fault. Okay. Movement of a rock bed along a fault. Okay. Remember, uh, movement of a rock bed along a fault. So, baka mamis interpret niyo kung anong tinatanong dito. So, always take note of the stem. The answer here is earthquake. Okay. Uh, the process may be faulting, but the movement of a rock bed along a fault is called an earthquake, okay? Uh, number 52, at night, if the temperature drops to above freezing point, above freezing point, so water vapor in the air condenses on grass and forms what? At night, if the temperature drops to above freezing point, little bit above freezing point, what water vapor in the air condenses on grass? Sa grass and forms what? Uh, vapor, vapor in the air condenses a grass, usually early in the morning, and it forms to what? Okay. So the answer is? Sa grass, ha? take note sa grass. So the answer here is? Dew. Okay. So we know that smog is smoke and fog. And uh, frost is different, no? And then soil is also different. Dew is the is a condensed water vapor, no? Um, and the water water vapor on air. 53. A raised land on the surface of the earth. Medyo, medyo easy to, no? Uh, well, thank you for the answers. All correct. Okay. A, ray, a raised plant, a raised land on the surface of the earth is called mountain. Okay, so 53 is mountain. I think... Uh, Clear sa atin, bakit? <laughs> okay. Again, we are looking for the best answer. So, valley is also raised land, but mountain. But valley, medyo flat sa, flat, no? Raised, pwedeng raised land siya, pero flat, uh, flat in some ways. Pero the more raised land is the mountain. There are some central place na raised din ang land, but not in all. So, mountain is far perfect as an answer. Okay. So, there are also different parts 
of geological parts. Now, if we're talking about land, we have the sea arc here. Uh, we also have the sea stack, mga tumut, yung mga rocks na medyo, medyo mataas, no? Parang single lang. We also have estuaries, areas where the seawater and the, and the, what is the, the pure water mix. Then we also have sandbar. Please take note of the terms. Then cove. 54. The movements of the huge solid rock plates of the earth are called what? Now here, huge solid rock plates. Okay, so the answer is diastrophism. Sir, parang erosion naman yung weathering naman yan. Take note, tesophism are movements of rock plates, solid rocks on the Earth's crust that results in formation of continents and islands. So the bigger portion is diastrophism. It's a bigger kind of movement of rock plates. Erosion, uh, erosion is the movement, small movements of one part of, of the geological area to the other. In weathering, it stays there, but eventually because of because of friction no, and all the other uh, chemical reactions, then the object is weathered. No? Okay. Uh, 55. Natural transfer of soil and other materials from one place to another. Thank you for your answers. No, natural transfer of soil and other materials from one place to the other. Okay. So this one, we would see the difference. Kung natural transfer of soil, take note of transfer and other materials, soil and other materials, from one place to the other, that is what erosion is. Okay? But the one in the picture, uh, the one in the picture is weathering. Erosion is different. No? This one, it doesn't transfer, but the objects, its original parts that are transferring from one, from this point to the other, that's erosion. But this one remaining to be there because of erosion is called weathering. Okay. 56, an unknown mineral was scratched by quartz. Okay, let us analyze this. An unknown mineral was scratched by quartz. What does this mean? Okay, an unknown mineral was scratched by quartz. What does this mean? We are going already to the concept of hardness of material. Number six. An unknown mineral was scratched by quartz. This means that blank. Okay. Is that the same hardness as quartz? Harder than quartz? Neither soft nor hard or softer than quartz? Uh, answers? Because it's scratch. It was scratched by quartz. It was scratched by quartz. So what does that mean? Because it was scratched by quartz, therefore it is softer than quartz. Okay, kay kasi kin na scratch nga ng quartz, eh, di ba? Correct. Okay, so yung mga si Mary Ann is correct, no? Here si Marielle is correct also. Uh, Midith, Marlu, Karen. Thank you for your answers. Take note of the most scale of hardness. The term Mosa, remember that, and uh, kino compare yung one substance to the other. If the other one is stronger, like 10, no, diamond is the hardest of all. That is why it cannot be scratched by anything but itself. And then talc is the less hard of all. Okay. okay, 57. A good scientist must question the authenticity of sources and the validity of conclusions. This means that he possess, he must possess which of the following attitudes. He questions the authenticity of sources and the validity of conclusions always. Not just a good scientist, a good person must do this. No? Uh, we, hindi lang, hindi yung vulnerable always a fake news. We question the authenticity of sources. That's why we study science. This is what it has us to do as a good uh, science student no? or science teacher. What is the meaning of this? What is the name or term? For this kind of attitude, okay, you question things. You you don't accept things easily. You you try to check its validity. So the answer is, well, again we're divided here. Uh, but I would like to introduce to you one very important, and this is one of my favorite attitude, the no scientific attitude. It's called 
Marielle and uh, Teacher Jomar answered it correctly. The answer is skepticism. Skepticism is the ability to hold one's biases and decision for the meantime and don't accept things right, right uh, uh, in face value. Hold it first and check its authenticity and then validate the, well, the concept, the, the allegation, or whatever is being proposed. Validate it first before making a conclusion. That attitude, not paranoia, but skepticism, help skepticism. Uh, that attitude is a good attitude for a scientist or for a person or for a citizen or for a citizen of, of Facebook. No, Always don't take things as it is. Always verify. Skepticism. Please don't forget that attitude. And let's all embrace no, skepticism. Healthy skepticism in science that is very important. It prevents us from being chismosa, chismosa lang. <laughs> okay, 58. Which agent of erosion causes potholes in the streets during every rain? Uh, in Ilonggo, hiligay non terms, we call this batche, mga batche sa streets, no? So what agent of erosion causes potholes in the streets, especially during heavy rains? Okay, the answer is, what causes potholes on the streets? The answer is flood water. Okay, not groundwater, not gravity, twin flood water. The more flood water you have there, the more it's road being eroded and it makes, turns into potholes. 59. When air molecules absorb thermal energy, absorb, uh, they expand in most cases. No? When molecules, air molecules absorb thermal energy, they expand. What happens to air density? when air molecules expand because of absorbing thermal energy? Does it decrease? Does it fluctuate, increase, or remain the same? When air molecules absorb thermal energy, they expand, causing the air density to blank. Decrease, fluctuate, increase, or remain the same. Ano kaya? Again, huh, always, there are many concepts being included here. Thermal expansion, but more than that is density. What happens to density when molecules, air molecules expand? What happens to the air, air density of these air molecules? So the answer is because the, vil, the volume expands, therefore the density decreases. Okay? Remember that density is mass over volume. Therefore, it is directly proportional to mass and inversely proportional to volume. So if volume increases, density decreases. If volume decreases, Density increases. Okay, take note of that. No, uh, also, so it turns from solid to liquid or liquid to to gas because gas needs more space, so it becomes more dense. Ah, uh, more, more. The volume expands more. Sixty. We have eleven more. What method is used in separating gold from sediments? If you want to separate gold from sediment, what is the process or method? The answer is panning. So you can see this one in movies, no? like uh, the black gold uh, movie where, where gold, is, gold is being separated from sediments using panning. They use this one with water. 61. What mineral is used as lead for pencil? So... The lead in the pencil, why could it pull akong pencil dito? The lead in the pencil is made up of what? So if you're answering this, syempre, diamond is already out of the picture. But maybe some of us are confused whether it's graphite, gypsum, or lead. What do you think is the right answer? By the way, thank you for those who are number 60. Okay? We're all, we're all getting the right answers. What mineral is used as lead for pencil? So many of us will answer lead, but the answer is graphite. Okay? Okay, but I think many of us are answering graphite right now. So thank, thank God. So, but prior to this, we are led to believe that it's made up of lead. That's why it's called lead. But that was made up of lead before, but eventually they knew, they eventually learned that lead is dangerous to the health of people, no? 
kinakain pa yan ng mga bata yung yung pencil. So they turned it into graphite, in which still works as pencil. 62. To pinpoint the exact location of the Philippines in the map, one must know the what? If you want to pinpoint the location of the Philippines in the map, let's say the globe, no? using the globe, one must know the what? So in this case, I have to move forward. We have to know the latitude and the longitude of the Philippines so that we would know where the Philippines is. Okay? Unless otherwise, no, uh, uh, you're asked to look for the Philippines by if you know already how the Philippines looks like, that would be enough. The map, in the map. But longitude and latitude also shows us, show us where the location of the thing that you want to locate is. 63. The amount of matter per unit volume. Siguro, hindi na siguro difficult to, no? Kasi from the, ter from the statement itself, it shows, it gives us already the equation. The amount of matter per unit volume. So M over V. And so this is density. The higher the density, the heavier it becomes. Diba? The lower the density, density, the less heavy it becomes, as shown in the equation. Which of these is a homogeneous mixture? Homogeneous mixture. Milkshake, salt solution, soil and water, or suspension. Okay? Which is a homogeneous mixture? Milkshake, salt, salt, soil and water, or suspension? Siyempre, the answer is salt solution. Okay? Mixed uh, water and salt. Reflected sound. Sinabi na natin to kanina. So, review ko lang. Sana, correct yung answer na lahat. We learned from the previous question. Reflected sound is echo. But also take note of the other two terms. Reverberation as the prolongation of sound. We don't like that when we are designing a theater. So, the sound going back and forth is called reverberation. When the sound, uh, it takes time for the sound to dissipate, that's reverberation. We don't want that. That's why we place papers, all the other things in order to minimize this, the, reson, the, the echo, the prolongation of sound. Resonance is the intrinsic frequency of the object. So a lot of objects have resonance. That's why singers, when they sing, sometimes uh, they can move uh, glasses when they they know the frequency, the resonance frequency of the glass. And that is because of resonance. 66, the best insulator among the following is, I have to move forward because we know the answer already. This question has been asked uh, yesterday also. 67, okay, here, current is a flow of what? Current is a flow of what? Is it the flow of atoms, electrons, elements? Or nuclei. Thank you for your answers. Again, no? uh, persistent yung mga ano natin, those who follow and join us. So current is a flow of what? Number 67. Anong flow ba yan? Anong nagpo-flow sa kuryente? In a current. Take note of this concept. Current, uh, voltage or potential difference and resistance. So all these three are important in Ohm's law. Uh, if we try to understand how current moves. So the answer in number 67 is B, okay? You don't need to put question mark, Anthony. You are right, no? B. So electrons. So electrons are moving. That's why it's called electricity. And uh, the amount of electrons that are moving is called current, okay? How fast it moves is due to the potential difference or voltage. And when something is stopping it from moving, it's called resistance. So, to you, for you to understand better how current works, uh, just imagine uh, instead of electron, water flowing. No? So the amount of water flowing is called current. How fast it flows because of because of gradient. No, the is that's a uh, that's voltage, and then the rocks in the river that stops water from flowing is resistance. Let's go to. Uh, by the way, so these are some of the few. Equations, no, in voltage, power, resistance, and uh, current. 68, three more. Bodies of water appear more shallow than they actually are. What causes this? So when you are now, no, nowadays many of us are going to pools 
are going into beaches. So we see bodies of water more often. Or even if we look at the, the water inside the, the, the glass, and they appear more shallow, they actually are. Okay, that's a dangerous, no? And we thought it's shallow, but when we jump over there, it's uh, deep pala. So that kind of uh, visual impairment, or at least, uh, uh, parang, uh, parang visual imagination, no? Di pala totoo yun. Uh, hindi naman siya imagination. Actual, we can see that, but it's not the true thing. So that is caused by what? What do you think? Okay, your answer is, Refraction, correct. Refraction of light. Thank you. Diffusion is the spreading, no, of light. Uh, the spreading of things, no. It can be light or something else. Dispersion is one example. Reflection is the bouncing, the bouncing. Diffusion can be anything, no, from the from the diffusion of smell, diffusion of water, from from concentrated to less concentrated. Uh, situation but the fraction is the bending of light or the refraction of light the bending of light because of the different densities of two media no? in this case when you look at water with a pencil in the water so it seems to be bent because there are two media air molecules the glass the three in fact the glass the beaker the glass or beaker and then the water and then also air there are seven properties of light many other properties you can but take note that uh, in this case, light travels very fast, 300,000 kilometers per second. It's, I, it's also <clears throat> light at the same time, a form of a wave. It travels at a straight path. Uh, it can vary in intensity. No, The change in intensity can also give you the colors. It interacts with matter. Light interacts with matter. It's, it is slower when it passes through solids, like glass, and, but it, it's also faster when it's in a vacuum. But when it goes back to the vacuum, it continues to be to maintain its speed, which is invariant, that is 20,000 meter kilometer per second. It's comprised of many colors, it carries energy and information also. Okay. Again, it's both particle and a wave, and it's uh, the particle is called photon. And light is also an electromagnetic wave, like uh, microwave um, and other forms of wave, no? Um, Alpha, uh, uh, microwave, radio wave, um, ultraviolet wave, etc. Okay. And when it passes through a spe spectrum, or in this case, a glass prism, uh, the white sunlight can turn into different colors. Remember, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow. So the, that's always a pattern, no? Red, uh, red having a uh, high red. Roy G. Beeb. So red having lowest wavelength, uh, longest wavelength, and then violet, smallest wavelength. Okay, or red being the the low um, the less amount of frequency, and violet having the greatest amount of frequency. So beyond violet is ultraviolet, below red is infrared. Okay, then the spectrum goes on. Okay, which of the following transmits sounds fastest? If light travels faster in volume and slower in gas or, or in liquid like water, but it goes back again to its original speed, which is 300,000 kilometer per second when it goes back to vacuum. How about sound? Diba sound travels in a medium, but what medium where sound will sound travel the fastest? Air, alcohol, metal, water. Okay, so the answer here is, so Vem answered A, air, A. The same with Adrian and others, no? They, many believe that sound travels uh, fastest in air. In fact, the answer is the reverse of light. Sound travels faster, uh, correct si Ella. Take note of this, no? Light, sound, light, travels faster in a vacuum and slowest in solids. It's the reverse in terms of sound. Sound travels the fastest in solids, in this case metals. It also travels fast uh, in, in liquids, but it's metal, it's faster. But it's the least that it will, uh, it will travel at all in a vacuum. 
Okay? So remember that, no? So here, this is one example. In an, in an air temperature of 40 degrees centigrade, sound travels 355 meters per second. 355 meters per second. So meaning to say, if there's a, if there's a sound and it takes one second, if, if you see an explosion, it takes one second for you to, to, to hear the sound of explosion, meaning that explosion happened 355 meters away from you. Or so if you took it, let's say two seconds after, if you hear the, the explosion two seconds after, that means it's twice as much. It's about 700 or 800, 810 meters away from you. But as you can see, it travels slower in rubber, but it travels fastest in aluminum. Okay, take note of that. By the way, this one at the right side is sonic boom. Okay, let's go to the last question at last. Sorry for the delay. Water, wind, plants, animals, and chemicals all help break down rocks into small particles in a process called what? Breaking down of rocks into small particles is the process of what? Okay. Breaking down of uh, water, wind, plant, animals, chemicals. Breaking and uh, chemicals all help breaking down rocks. Breaking down of rocks to water, wind, plants, animals, and chemicals. What do you call this process? Okay, answers. Okay, here now. Answer is weathering, correct? No? So the one at the bottom is weathering. The one on top is what we call erosion. Okay? And the... Uh, the process of moving from one to the other is called accretion. That's why in law, may accretion law then also. Okay? So uh, that's it. That's 70 items, my God, no, in two hours. No, exactly two hours because we start, although we started one o'clock, then we ended up, but we really started one o one. So I will not say anything too much anymore. I have said my piece last yesterday. And uh, one thing lang that I would like to stress. Now we are here because we want to teach. And teaching is one of the noblest yet thankless profession. Thankless in the sense that it's very difficult, but we are, but we still, we are still crazy enough no, wanting to be teachers. Uh, it's difficult, but it's very noble. It touches lives. And uh, our our effect to to people is endless. No, We cannot calculate how they are impact to others. Kaya more than the subject, more than the science, more than the topic, it's the values that we are trying to, to teach our students. And the best way to teach them values is for them to see that in us. The value of generosity, the value of faith, having faith that does justice, and the value of being, uh, being loving and serving, no? serving others without asking for anything in return. That is what makes teaching noble. And so I hope everyone will pass the let. And I hope we can see each other again no? for another round for our science. Thank you so much. Mamex. All right. Thank you so much po. Again, Doc H, maraming salamat po sa uh, pagpapaunlak no, sa ating review sessions. Again, that ends the two-day of discussion of our general science with Doc H. And as promised, Doc H said he, he is going to finish all four of his sets, okay? So we are going to set our schedule for that. And so, antabayanan nyo lamang po. And I know that you are all following our our, our Facebook page, also, also your our YouTube channel. And so, uh, just try to be on the lookout for our announcement, okay? So, sa muli po, Sir H, maraming salamat. I miss you. And I hope yeah, to see you too. soon. And of course, if you are a TLE major, Values Ed, AgriFish, and Physical Science, make sure that you comment your email address. Email address na lamang po sa ating comment box right now para diretso na po kayo i-add sa inyong Google Classroom for your freebies. Again, email add for those four majors that I've, uh, I've mentioned. I am going to add you uh, after our discussion of professional education at 7.30 p.m. tonight. Okay, I will be going back to 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 sleep pa, no, after this. So, sa muli, maraming salamat, Sir H. And of course, we end with our prayer. Muli po tayong manalangin, mga kaguro, para sa ating pagtatapos sa gawain po na ito. Panginoon, salamat po muli sa pagtulong mo sa amin, sa amin pong pag-aaral. Marami po kaming mga natutunan at sana po ay 
tumimo ito sa aming puso, sa aming isip. Manatili po ang mga bagay nito at paalala namin, magamit po namin para po sa aming pagsusulit po Diyos. Salamat sa mga bagong natutunan po na ito mula po sa aming teacher, Panginoon. At uh, humihingi po kami ng pagpapala sa bawat isa sa amin, Panginoon. At sana po sa panibagong araw po muli, kami po ay gabayan mo hanggang sa susunod po namin pag-aaral. Panginoon ay magkikita-kita po kami, magsasama-sama po kami. At nao po iligtas ang bawat isa, nao po ay may ginagawa ang bawat isa para makuha namin yung amin pong inaasam na maging ganap ng guru, Panginoon. Salamat po sa pagkakataon po na ito na ibinigay mo sa bawat isa sa amin. At sana po sa amin pong pansamantalang paghihiwalay po ngayon, na po ay gabayan mo po ang bawat isa sa amin, makapagpahinga po kami, maging malakas po kami, Panginoon, maging productive po kami sa lahat ng aming ginagawa. At ganoon din po ang Panginoon, may bigay po namin ang aming sarili sa inyo, na ikaw po ang may likha ng lahat ng mga bagay, ay nararapat po na ikaw ay aming sambahin at purihin sa pamamagitan ng aming mga labi, sa pamamagitan ng aming pagsunod po sa inyo. Salamat po, Panginoon, na nandyan ang Panginoong Jesus. Nandyan ang banal na Espiritu na tumutulong sa bawat isa sa amin. Panginoon, salamat sa pag-ibig mo sa amin, pagpapatawad mo sa bawat isa sa amin. Narito po kami, nawa po ang mga pakinggan mo, ang bawat isa sa amin, ang mga panalangin po namin, Panginoon. Sa lahat po ito, ay dalangin namin sa pangalan ni Jesus na aming Panginoon na tagapagligtas, Amen. 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 All right, so Amen. that ends our discussion, your two-day review, General Science with Doc H. And I am going to see you at 7.30 p.m. for our professional education discussion. Samule, you've just had Doc H with Guru Pinoy, and I leave you with the saying, malit manabuti ng mga kaalaman. Ang dulo nito ay malaking kaginawaan. Maraming salamat. See you at 7.30, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Sir H. Thank you, Mame. Nako. Again, oh, matulog ka na. <laughs> <laughs>